It's good for Tony and me to be back here at Church of the Messiah. You have a wonderful place and a wonderful church and wonderful pastoral leadership. Amen? Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness for the kingdom and for this diocese, and may God bless you in your work. I heard a story the other day that reminded me of Father Lon Pardee. Not because he's elderly, but because he's <laughs> grandfatherly. So this little boy was saying to his grandfather, Granddad, after 60 years of marriage, you still call Grandma beautiful, honey bunch, dear. How do you do that? He said, well, son, I'll tell you a little secret. Five years ago, I forgot her name, and I'm afraid to ask her what it is. You certainly do. You're under vows. What can I say? You're stuck. <laughs> How true, though. I know. I know. We're all getting there, right? Well, here again, these words from the master. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. With these words spoken to a man who had just been cured and cleansed from leprosy, words spoken to other people in the scriptures also during the life of ministry of Jesus, he clearly affirmed there's a relationship between our faith and our healing. Put simply, the presence of faith releases healing power, while the absence of faith restrains healing power. Now, that's not to say that God cannot or will not heal apart from faith, as he most certainly can and he most certainly does, for which we should be grateful. Because I'll tell you, sometimes we don't have a lot of faith. Sometimes we might not have any faith at all. So we're glad for God's mercy that he heals sometimes despite our lack of faith. Nor is it to say that we're always going to be healed just because we have a lot of faith. Because I'm sure you've figured out by now, we don't always get what we want, even if we believe it to be true. What it's saying is, there's a principle in Scripture of faith. And that faith often releases God's blessings into our lives, by which we receive them by faith, come on, and with thanks giving. So today, we're going to consider three aspects, if you will, of this kind of faith, healing faith, as evidenced by this man to whom Jesus spoke these words. Your faith has made you well. I figure if that's true, he's got good faith. And maybe we should have more faith like him. Maybe we'd get more healing like he did. So he will be an encouragement to us that we too might go likewise and be made well. The first aspect or manifestation of this man's faith was persistence, or we could say perseverance. So listen to the text again, Luke 17, 11. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, as we well know, lepers were not only physically infirm, they were relationally destitute. Amen? I mean, we know a little bit about them. Leprosy was considered such a dangerously contagious disease. Those so afflicted with it were isolated from the rest of the community in order to protect the healthy from the sick. Well, that's completely understandable, but utterly devastating to the sick. Having lost virtually everything, these men were, in effect, outcasts of society. Helpless and hopeless, relying on the generosity of others to keep from starving to death, even while dying of their disease. And it was in that state of desperation, these ten lepers came to Jesus 
crying out for His mercy and His blessing. I see them as a vivid illustration for all of us of the value and the power of passionate, persistent prayer. That's the kind of prayer they believe would move the heart of God. The question is, what did they expect Jesus to give them? Well, apparently not money. As Jesus didn't have a lot of money, and I don't think he had much of a reputation for giving away money, because I can't think of a single time in the Bible he gave anybody any money. Can you? Not that financial needs aren't important. How many of you know money helps, especially when you go to public? The only people who don't need money are the government. Moving right along, <laughs> they just make more of it, right? The rest of us need some money. But we understand, of course, that even though finances are important, Jesus had something to offer these men that was really more important than money. Healing? Deliverance? How about salvation? This is what these men needed more than anything else, whether they realized it or not. In fact, I would submit to you, that's what everyone needs more than anything else, whether they realize it or not. Healing, come on, deliverance, and most importantly, salvation. I mean, think of it. Would it not be better to go to heaven having been sick than healthy and wealthy go to hell? I know I'm not making you choose, but in terms of eternity, these men needed to get saved. And when these men cried out for Jesus for his mercy and blessing, I would submit to you that in and of itself was an act of faith. They had sufficient faith even at that moment to believe that Jesus could and would do something for them. That's faith. Trusting, expectant faith. And that act of faith began the process of their healing, which I would submit is also an important spiritual principle in the kingdom for all of us to remember. Prayer itself is an act of faith. Amen? It's a manifestation. It's a demonstration that we believe God hears our prayers and we believe God will answer our prayers. Otherwise, why bother to pray? Now, we know that that necessarily means he's going to answer our prayers the way we want him to or when we want him to, but we're trusting him else we wouldn't even be crying out at all. So sometimes we're like those ten men, manifesting our faith by crying out to the Lord for our healing, provision, protection, favor, mercy, forgiveness, deliverance, salvation, whatever it is we desperately need in our lives and in our hearts. And I would submit we would do well to follow the example of these ten lepers and to cry out to God with enthusiasm and expectation. In other words, passion and perseverance, believing that as we press in, press on, and press through in prayer, God will respond, and we will receive. Amen? Well, then, obedience, 17, 14. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. It's interesting, is it not? that Jesus did not heal these men immediately upon request. How many of you know, often Jesus healed people immediately and completely. But in this case, he commanded them to go and show themselves to the priests. And we're all going like, what's wrong with the doctors? Were there no doctors? Well, there were doctors, but the priests under the Mosaic Covenant were the ones responsible initially to diagnose leprosy and then subsequently to determine whether the leper had been healed. So in effect, these lepers were being required to take a step of faith as part of the process of receiving their healing. 
Specifically, Jesus was requiring them to go to the priests to have their healing determined before they were actually healed of their infirmity. Are you with me? I submit to you that's a step of faith. And that may be the kind of faith stepping that the Lord might require of us from time to time in our own walk and life of faith. Sometimes God's going to expect us to obey His Word in order to receive His blessings. It's called obedient faith. Think of Naaman, whom we just listened to the story, part of it, in the Old Testament lesson. He, too, was required to take a step of faith in order to receive his healing, and he likewise was a leper. Amen? But he got offended by the word of the Lord. I know that we never do, but we may come across people whom we are counseling who get offended by the word of the Lord. Fortunately for Naaman, as you know the story, wiser heads prevailed, and he ended up doing what the Lord had said through the prophet to do. And in the doing, he received the healing. Amen? He, too, took a step of faith and had to act in obedience to the word of the Lord, even though he didn't know why. Hello. Isn't that why it's called faith? Sometimes you just obey God, even if we don't know why. And so also these ten lepers, they received their healing as they Obeyed. So here's my question to you. If they had not obeyed, do you think they would have been healed? Well, presumably not. Because Jesus told them to do something, and that's when they were healed. And it was in their obedience, manifesting their faith, that the healing was released. Again, it's called trust. Which is why... In my opinion, it's a good practice for us that when necessary, to take a step of faith. Sometimes when we're praying for ourselves, sometimes when we're praying for others. But understanding, of course, that a step of faith is not a step of foolishness. Consider, for example, if we're praying for someone's healing, how many of you know we should never encourage them to stop taking their prescribed medications until and unless a doctor declares them to be healed. <laughs> However, we might encourage them to go to their doctor and let the doctor confirm they've been healed and they can stop taking their medications. Step three, or manifestation three, was gratitude. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. I think we were saying something about loud earlier today. Louder and louder and louder. I don't know how loud we got, but we were getting louder. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, we're not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, at first glance, it might not be readily evident in this situation how important gratitude was in this man's healing, especially as we've already been told that all ten lepers received their healing, not just one, correct? The one who bothered to return and gave thanks to God wasn't healed anymore, doesn't look like, than the nine who went on their way without giving thanks. However, the importance of gratitude is hidden in the language itself. When all ten lepers are said to have been healed, the word means simply cured or cleansed. Now, I would submit to you, if you're a leper, that's a good thing. Yes, that's great. However, all men received their cleansing and their healing, but one man got something else. When the one leper came back to Jesus, 
a different word is used. When Jesus says, go your way, your faith has made you well, it doesn't mean simply cured. It means to be saved or to be made whole. I would submit to you that's the greater blessing. So they were all healed physically, but only one was healed spiritually, relationally, emotionally, whatever blessing saved means. And that was the one who prayed with passionate gratitude. He not only asked for the blessing with passion, he thanked God with equal passion. And boy, that's a good model for us. Because I'll tell you, most of the time when we pray in desperation, we're crying out to God. And then when he hears our prayers, we move on to the next petition. <laughs> Such is the power of praise. And that itself is an important spiritual principle in living a life of faith, isn't it? How about rejoice in the Lord whenever we feel good? Philippians 4.4. 4. No, wait, that's not what it says. How about rejoice in the Lord when everything's going well? How about rejoice in the Lord when I feel like it? No, we know the passage, don't we? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace, maybe that's what he got, the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's an attitude of a grateful heart. It's an attitude wherein we rejoice in the Lord regardless of what's happening in our lives. I know it's a challenge, but it's still true. Neither distracted by our circumstances nor distressed by our challenges. It's an attitude wherever we're giving thanks to the Lord even before we receive the answers to our prayer. Because faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the substance of things not yet seen. It's an attitude where we're keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For that's the kind of focused faith that will bear the fruit of a peace-filled life. So those are the three things that I see modeled for us in this encounter between Jesus and 10 men who needed a miracle in their lives. Persistence, obedience, and gratitude. Each manifesting a degree and a measure of faith by which Jesus could say to at least one of them, go your way. Your faith has made you well. May we too increasingly have such faith that we can increasingly go our way having been made well. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, this is Father Scott Booker with Church Messiah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please click the like button below. And also, you can click the subscribe button to get notifications in your inbox when we post other videos in the future. You can click the little bell below and you'll get uh, notifications also. So do that, and uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks, God bless you, we appreciate it. Uh, pray for us, and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.